revise what are the questions asked on mechanical ventilation. So what is mechanical ventilation? Mechanical ventilation is the breath delivered by machine. So any, it's a respiratory therapy which is given to support the oxygenation and ventilation of the patient when due to primary disease condition, this, these things are affected. So while we treat the primary disease, the support of ventilation and oxygenation is done with the help of mechanical ventilation. So it's a temporary respiratory therapy. So I told you what is mechanical ventilation? It is breath delivered by machine, delivered by machine. That is the ventilator. So it's a respiratory therapy, respiratory therapy to support the oxygenation and ventilation, to support control oxygenation and ventilation and ventilation got it so this is what is mechanical ventilation got my point okay so how this breath would be realized or delivered to the patient it depends upon the mode of mechanical ventilation so to understand the mode and how do we select the mode we need to understand what define a mechanical breath. So a mechanical breath is defined by how would it get triggered. So how the mechanical breath is triggered. So mechanical breath can be triggered by machine that is the time triggered machine triggered breath or it would be triggered by patient that is patient triggered. Okay. So if it's machine triggered it is a controlled breath. If it is a patient triggered it would be spontaneous or assisted breath. Then how it is cycled from inspiration to expiration. So it could be time cycle or it could be flow cycled, right? Mostly it is time cycle in most of the mode except PSV in which pressure support ventilation in which it is flow cycled. Then how the breath is controlled that is the volume control or the pressure control. So two way the breath will be controlled. Volume or pressure right and what is the baseline pressure on which the patient breathe and that in case of mechanical ventilation we uh, use is PEEP. We, the baseline pressure on which we breathe is our your functional residual capacity. Now functional residual capacity is the volume which remains in the alveoli after expiration and we give PEEP in patient on mechanical ventilation positive end expiratory pressure and that is the end pressure on which inspiration and expiration happens. So I'll talk about PEEP as well. So these are the four factors which would define a breath. So let us talk about volume control and pressure control. What do I mean by volume control and pressure control? So when we set a mode, most of the mode can be volume control and the pressure control. In volume control, we have to fix our tidal volume. So in volume control, tidal volume is fixed. So tidal volume is fixed. In pressure control, the higher limit of the plateau pressure is fixed. In this, pressure is fixed. Volume delivered depends on the compliance of the lung. So volume can vary. Volume can vary. And in volume control, definitely the pressure can vary. Pressure can vary. Okay. In volume control, compared to pressure control, the inspiratory flow is constant throughout the inspiratory inspiration till the total tidal volume is delivered. So this is a bit uh, uncomfortable for the patient. So volume control is less comfortable, less comfortable for patient. Pressure control is more comfortable, more comfortable, right? In volume control, right, the alveoli is filled I mean, when uh, alveoli is filled unevenly because flow is constant throughout the inspiration. In pressure control, flow is higher during inspiration and flow decreases. So, alveoli is evenly filled. So, uneven, uneven filling of alveoli with the gases. Pressure control, even filling, right, of alveoli. But you know, Nothing is that which is better. Patient, some patient tolerate volume control better, some patient tolerate pressure control better, right? So any mode could be suitable in the patient, okay? So these are the 
features which de, uh, which describe a breath and on this how it is delivered depends the modes so coming on the modes these are the conventional mode conventional modes okay so assess control mode in which we have both volume and pressure control we have synchronized intermittent man, minute ventilation we have both volume and pressure control and we have a, a spontaneous mode that is called pressure support ventilation which i will talk about okay so let's talk about assist control mode assist control mode what are the settings we do in assist control mode you know assist control mode each and every breath is either controlled by the ventilator or assisted by the ventilator so we have a fixed tidal volume which is delivered in simv we have fixed breath which is controlled or supported by the ventilator and in between two supported breath or controlled breath patient can breathe spontaneously that breath would not be totally controlled or supported by the ventilator so in between spontaneous breathing is possible between two fixed breath in simv so all tidal volume is not fixed all breath tidal volume is not fixed okay so let us talk about the setting of the assist control in assist control if let's say this is a volume assist control so we have to fix the tidal volume so normally whenever a patient comes we fix a tidal volume 6 to 8 ml per kg body weight okay respiratory rate near to the patient's respiratory rate before the patient was put on ventilator normally 14 to 18 breath per minute peep the positive end expiratory pressure we start with 5 cm of water we can increase according to our requirement fio2 we start with 1 that is 100% 1 and we decrease it to non toxic level non toxic level that is 60% as soon as possible inspiratory flow we keep it between 60 to 100 liters per minute in most of the ventilator it is fixed now guys i told you we put a patient on ventilator to maintain the oxygenation and ventilation tidal volume and the respiratory rate is responsible for delivering the minute ventilation minute ventilation and if patient's ventilation is getting affected we need to increase the tidal volume and the respiratory rate and peep and fio2 is responsible for maintaining the oxygenation so if patient's oxygenation is getting affected we need to increase peep and fio2 got it so if ventilation is getting affected we need to increase tidal volume and respiratory rate if oxygenation then we need to increase peep and fio2 so whenever we put a patient on ventilator after 20 minutes of the ventilator setting we get a abg done arterial blood gas done we analyze the ventilation of the patient adequacy for adequacy of ventilation and oxygenation by seeing the abg in that we are concerned with ph and pco2 both of this will give us an idea of ventilation ph is 7.35 to 7.45 normal pco2 normal is range is 35 to 45 if this range is being maintained the ventilation is adequate right po2 the normal is between 72 to 104 if po2 is decreasing below 60 mm of hg we call it hypoxemia and we need to increase the oxygenation so target is to keep the pao2 above 60 mm of hg so we see these three value in the abg and we change the setting of the ventilator accordingly okay so i told you to improve the oxygenation we need to change the setting of peep and fio2 and to improve the ventilation we need to change the setting of tidal volume and respiratory rate so let's see what are the changes we make so as i said to improve oxygenation what do we do we improve increase the for improving the oxygenation we increase the peep increase the peep okay so peep what is this peep peep stands for positive end expiratory pressure so when we apply the peep the alveoli remains expanded and o2 co2 exchange happens from a wide surface area so oxygen oxygenation of the patient improves so peep prevents collapse of alveoli collapse of alveoli so what we do we give the patient a minimum peep of 5 cm of water and if it is required we go on increasing it till the target oxygenation is achieved the other way to improve the oxygenation is by applying fio2 increasing the 
FiO2, right? We start with 100% oxygen and we try to decrease it to 60% as soon as possible. Be tighter between PEEP and FiO2 because if we will give a very high PEEP, FiO2 also, then there is a risk of oxygen toxicity, risk of oxygen toxicity. So, we need to control our FiO2 as well. And if we keep a very high PEEP, there is a risk of barotrauma, there is risk of barotrauma as well. So, we need to control the PEEP as well. So, we tighter at what minimum PEEP and minimum FiO2, we achieve just adequate oxygenation, just adequate oxygenation. Got my point? So, if patient has a very high FiO2 and low PEEP, on oxygenation has to be improved, we increase the PEEP. If patient has a very high PEEP, and low FiO2, we increase the uh, FiO2 of the patient. We balance at what minimum PEEP and minimum FiO2, we achieve just adequate oxygenation. So, we titrate, titrate PEEP and FiO2 for oxygenation, oxygenation, okay. Now, ventilation. Now, ventilation, two factors are responsible for maintaining the ventilation, tidal volume, and the respiratory rate, respiratory rate. For tidal volume, we normally start with 6 to 8 ml per kg body weight. We can increase it, right, to 10 ml per kg body weight if adequate ventilation is not getting achieved. Respiratory rate, we start with 12 to 14 breath per minute. We can increase it to 25 to 30 breath per minute, right, if adequate minute ventilation is not being achieved. So, these are the two ways by which we detect oxygenation and ventilation. So, questions would be asked, they will give you, they will give you a ventilatory setting and they will ask you to make the changes in that according to the ABG report. So, if oxygenation is getting affected, you need to change PEEP and FiO2, right, if ventilation, tidal volume and respiratory rate, okay. So, this is about the invasive ventilation, uh, the assess control mode, okay. Now, just in one line I want to add in this topic about non-invasive ventilation, non-invasive ventilation. Now, non-invasive ventilation, I can use any mode in this also, just the patient's interface, patient's interface is a mask rather than endotracheal tube. So, in this patient's interface is mask and the most important criteria most important criteria to fulfill for starting non-invasive ventilation is that patient should be conscious and oriented. Patient should be conscious, not in coma and patient can, uh, has ability to clear the secretion. So, patient can clear the secretion. Otherwise, what will happen? Aspiration will happen if I will put the patient on mask. Right. So, these two are very important criteria to be fulfilled before putting a patient on NIV. So, number of times we put patient on NIV before invasive mechanical ventilation, see if patient improves with NIV because with NIV there is less risk of ventilator associated pneumonia, less infection, less risk of ventilator associated pneumonia. But if patient is not tolerating NIV, or not improving with, with NIV, immediately we convert into invasive ventilation. We should have a, we keep a low threshold to convert it into invasive ventilation. Now, two diseases are very nicely managed with NIV, two conditions rather I should say, very nicely managed by NIV is COPD, acute exacerbation of COPD and cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema, got it? So, keep it in mind. So, this is all about mechanical ventilation I wanted to talk about. Thank you.